Israel and the PLO put it in writing after decades of hatred. Is this the first step toward peace? This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening. Connie Chung is on assignment. Momentum is building tonight for peace in the Middle East. As Israel and the PLO formally agreed to end their armed struggle today, King Hussein of Jordan said he too expects to sign an agreement within days on a framework for peace with Israel. The United States resumed talks with the PLO, and President Clinton said peace will come with what he called, quote, guarantees. But as Bob Simon reports now from Israel, all the hopeful signs came amid continued doubts, threats, and more violence. While history was happening inside the Prime Minister's office, protesters outside were trying to block its path. Right-wing Israelis, settlers mainly, afraid that Rabin was signing away the deeds to their land. On part of that land in Gaza, Muslim fundamentalists were on the march, convinced the PLO was selling them out. But Foreign Minister Shimon Peres defended the pact as a triumph of the future over the past. What we were trying seriously is to get rid of a poisonous past and to use a biblical wish to return to a land of milk and honey. It was a ceremony of recognition, but in a far deeper sense and is usually conveyed by that diplomatic phrase. For 45 years, the Israelis and the Palestinians have refused to recognize each other's existence as a nation, as a people. They've been waging war in an attempt to obliterate each other from this land. In 1948, the Palestinians turned down an offer to split the land with the Jews. They went to war instead and lost. The Jews became a nation. The Palestinians became refugees. In 1964, the PLO was formed to turn that around. In 1967, the war that was meant to do that backfired. Led by a general named Itzhak Rabin, the Israelis conquered more land. Two years later, Yasser Arafat took over the PLO and became the prophet of terror. His disciples blew up airplanes, hijacked others, murdered civilians, athletes at the Munich Olympics. The world will not have a minute's peace, the terror proclaimed, until the Palestinians get back the land, all the land. In their nation-building enterprise, the Jews behaved as if there were no Palestinians. In fact, the early Zionists proclaimed this region a land without a people for a people without a land. They defined their borders with bulldozers. They built settlements on Arab olive groves. While the PLO made speeches about driving Israelis into the sea, Israel did just that to the PLO. It invaded Lebanon in 1982 with the express purpose of chasing Arafat out. It succeeded. Arafat boarded a boat to Tunis. Soon, presumably, he'll move again to Gaza or the West Bank. Today's ceremony recognized his right to do that, the right of his people to have a home in a small part of the land which two peoples claimed as their own. Bob Simon, CBS News, Tel Aviv.